Assalamu alaikum and hello. So in this video, I'm going to continue the last part of our chapter 6 predictable part 3 where in this video, I'm going to focus about variation of atomic radii across period 2 and 3. So what we are going to focus only for the elements on the second and the third row of the predictable. As you can see here, you got the graph which showing the ionic radii across period 3. So basically, I'm going to divide my explanation into three parts. The first part is going to be for cation along this line. And the second part is going to be anion along the top line. And the last part, part 3, I'm going to focus between cation and anion, between Si4 plus and P3 minus. So in this case, we are going to take a look at the electronic configuration for each of these ions. So let's get on with the next page. I got my electronic configuration for each of them where you can see that some of them contains the same electronic configuration due to their tendency to donate or accept electrons in order to achieve stability. So as you see here, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 electronic configuration applicable for Na+, Mg2+, Al3+, and Si4+. And the rest of it for P3-, S2-, and Cl2- got 18 electrons based on the electronic configuration here. So what's next? I'm going to calculate the value for effective nuclear charge. Why? Because in this case, we are talking about across the period trend. So that's why the factor that we are going to focus only effective nuclear charge. So please memorize and remember from the previous video that I taught you. So let's get on with how you want to calculate for this part. For this one, as you can see here, I got the proton number 11. The proton number stay as it is and then I minus with my inner electrons. In this case, my inner electrons only for orbital 1s. And then what we're going to do for Na, we got 11 proton number. So it's going to minus with two electrons from the inner shell. So I will have 11 minus 2 the value is going to be positive 9. So please remember, you have to put the positive sign for Zeph. And the same case for magnesium, I have 12 proton number minus inner electrons. 2, I will have positive 10. And then for aluminium, Al3 plus minus 2 equals to positive 11. And the next one, 14 minus 2 equals to positive 12. And as you see here, the value for Zeph keeps increasing. And the next one, I got P3 minus, S2 minus and Cl minus. So how I want to determine the number of inner electrons. As you see here, the highest n value is n equals to 3. So n equals to 3 is going to be the valence shell. So, the rest of them is going to be my inner shell. So, this is my inner shell. So, I'm going to calculate based on the electrons in the inner shell. So, for P3 minus, I got 15 proton number minus with, I got 10 inner electrons. So, it's going to be positive 5. And then for S2 minus, I got 16 proton number minus 10 inner electrons. I will get positive 6. And for Cl minus, 17 minus 10, I will have positive 7. And as you see here, 
the number also keeps increasing. So what can we deduce from here? When the number keeps increasing, it means that the size becomes smaller. So please remember about across the period, we will use this triangle. So from left to right, the size becomes more smaller due to the proton number increases. So how I want to explain for this part, part 1 for cation. Cation, if I want to focus for Na plus until Si4 plus, I can see that the biggest one will be Na plus followed by Mg2 plus followed by Al3 plus followed by Si4 plus. So this in decreasing order. So this is arrangement in decreasing order. And the next one, how I want to explain across the period, I can see that from Na to Si4 plus, the number of proton increases. And then number of electrons, 10 electrons are the same for each ion. But effective nuclear charge increases as you see from this value that you calculate already. So it keeps increasing. And then nucleus attraction towards the valence electrons becomes stronger. And then electrons are pull closer to the nucleus kerana daya tarikan yang sangat kuat. Thus, ionic size decreases from Na plus to Si4 plus. So, apakah trend yang kita gunakan di sini? Trend yang kita gunakan adalah PISAS di mana PISAS bila proton number increase Effective nuclear charge increase, attraction increase and the size decrease. So itulah yang kita apply daripada ilmu yang awak sudah belajar dalam video sebelum ni. So settle for the first part, we talk about the cation iaitu positive ions dalam period 3. Now I'm going to focus for the next one iaitu part yang kedua anion. So anions we know as negative ion. So from your value, you see that P3- minus has the lowest effective nuclear charge. So that's why we can deduce that across the period, it's getting smaller for the size. So which means that P3- minus has the biggest size between all the other anions in period 3. So, how I want to write it down, I'm still going to use PISAS where proton number increase, effective nuclear charge increase, attraction between valence electrons and nucleus increase, the size decrease. So, what will happen? The same trend we are going to use for this triangle across the period, also for anion in this case. So, across the period from P3- to Cl-, proton number increases. However, the number of electrons dalam kes ini adalah 18 electrons are the same for each ion. Effective nuclear charge, Zf, increases. And nucleus attraction towards valence electrons becomes stronger and electrons are being pulled closer towards the nucleus which making the ionic size decreases and one thing that you should be aware my term here is ionic size bukan lagi atomic size kenapa sebab kita ada elemen yang mempunyai charge dia adalah ion so, itu beza dengan video yang sebelum ni, you learn about atomic size. Sekarang kita learn about ionic size. Okay, get back to this part. So, settle 
for second part yaitu bahagian anion. Now we go to the last part di mana I'm going to compare between anion and cation. As you see from the picture at page 1, you will see that there is a fluctuation between Si4 plus to P3 minus. Maknanya ada peningkatan yang sangat mendadak antara dua ion ini. So, apa yang dimaksudkan dengan bahagian di sini? Kita ada Si4 plus and P3 minus, dia electronic configuration. And as you see here, for N value, the highest N value for Si4 plus adalah N equals to 2. And then the N value for P3 minus adalah N equals to 3. So, about here, you see that the N value is different. So, bila different, kita tidak lagi gunakan layout Pizas, tapi kita akan gunakan NSAS. So, seperti mana yang saya tulis di sini, NSAS akan terjadi apabila, contoh apabila saya ada increasing number of shells. So, the factor is shielding effect increases and the attraction between nucleus and valence electrons becomes weaker and the size increases. So, the same case will happen for this part between anions and cation where we talk about fluctuation. So, this is the spelling for fluctuation. It means that kenaikan secara mendadak dalam graf yang saya tunjukkan dalam page sebelum ini. So, the first point that I'm going to make here adalah we talk about Si4 plus as my subject has less shell than P3 minus. And then, of course, the shielding effect for Si4 plus is smaller than P3 minus. That makes attraction between valence electron and nucleus become stronger. In Si4 plus, then P3 minus. Then that's why, so as a conclusion, ionic radius for Si4 plus is smaller than P3 minus. So, itulah cara di mana kita lihat perbezaan antara tiga bahagian dalam period 3. So, as final conclusion, how you want to do the final conclusion, you are going to add up everything. So, you are going to combine all the arrangements you have for three parts. We will start in decreasing order across period 3 where I'm going to start with the biggest one first where the biggest one is going to be anion specifically for P3- followed by the rest of them. So this is how you do the arrangement for period 3 and that's what I'm going to focus now and I hope you clear there are three parts di mana dua bahagian cation and anion kita gunakan layout PISAS. Another one more between anion dan cation kita gunakan NSAS. So seperti mana arrangement yang saya ada menggunakan ilmu yang saya ajar based on electronic configuration saya deduce P3- minus adalah yang paling largest. So adakah kita boleh proof daripada graf yang kita lihat? Adakah P3- minus paling tinggi? Yes. The value for P3- minus is the highest one compared to the other elements. So which means that our explanation from here until here is correct so far. And then one last thing that you have to remember Antara anion, neutral atom dan cation, anions mempunyai size yang paling besar. Neutral atom akan berada di tengah-tengah antara anion dan cation. So itulah yang saya illustrate from here. Lithium group 1, size nya lebih besar daripada fluorine group 17. Tapi setelah kita lihat 
Lithium derma satu elektron Saiz dia akan mengecut dan menjadi yang paling kecil Dan fluorin apabila dia menerima elektron dia akan menjadi yang paling besar Baiklah sedikit penambahan di mana to make it more clear to you Awak kena faham ini adalah cara untuk kita explain antara kation, anion dan perbezaan kation, anion. So awak boleh baca dan caranya lebih agak sama sahaja seperti mana yang saya gunakan dalam layout yang sebelum ni. Cuma dia dalam bentuk table supaya awak nampak comparison of ionic radii between kation, anion and both of them. So you can try to answer, try this 4.0 and 5.0 so that you can improve your understanding more. So if you've got any questions left, you can ask me during the discussion. So that's it for this video. I hope you clear how to describe or explain the variation of ionic radii in period 2 and 3. So that's all from me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.